So my name is Ellen DeLab and I'm a certified professional organizer and family manager coach. I'm actually in my 10th year, I can't believe it, it's gone by so fast. And I love helping busy people streamline their lives and put organization in their routines. Today we're going to talk a little bit about decluttering specifically, and I'm finding it's a national obsession, because even Oprah has a problem with it, okay? If Oprah has a problem with it, we probably all have a problem with it. So before we get started, I wanted to get y'all in the mood by playing a little game that I call Trash or Treasure. And so I want you to call out whether you think this item is trash or treasure. So we're going to get started with just a little bit of easy things. So what do y'all think? Trash, trash or trash? trash. trash. What is it? it was a baby food container. Oh, um, um, I would think it's trash. Um, well, she's going to do it. You could put little buttons in it. You could put jewelry in it. Paper clips. That's true. That's true. You cannot recycle it. No number on the bottom. <clears throat> okay? So some people trash, some people treasure. Okay, let's see what else we have here. T-shirt. How many t-shirts do we all have at home? <laughs> Get them all the time. Way too many. And you know, a lot of people are making them into quilts, which is a really great idea. Now this one, trash or treasure? It looks new. It's new. And I happen to be Gigi. So it's a treasure. So it's a treasure for me. Uh -huh. So, you know, again, make some decisions about, you know, how many t-shirts do you need? And okay, here's another one. Oh. Trash or treasure? Oh. It's probably oh. a treasure. Oh. Well, so there's a hand that goes out wrong. You know, if you had a little girl, you might, she might be willing to wear this. You never know. Your girl might be frilly. Your girl might be a tomboy. Okay. Yeah. And so here's my, one of my other favorites because I find that moms really get stuck on this one. Trash or treasure? Okay, that's a treasure. <laughs> this one's a treasure, but you know we have to be mindful of how many treasures of this do we want. Okay. Because what I'm finding is that as um, Grown-ups, when we try to pass this on to our grown children, they want about 15 minutes of this. So if you have like a box from every year, it's going to be really hard for everybody to part with these things. And then this is one of my favorite ones, this last one, which are the twisty ties. Oh, those are trash. I consider them treasure. Treasure. Some of them, you know, these are the really good ones because they're not torn apart yet. <laughs> We're saving these just in case. I have a drawer. I have to. I always need them. Right. So they're easy access for you. What do you use them yeah. for? Um, that's my problem. <laughs> because you can throw away the things at the end of the um, grab, wrap, and mm -hmm. the little plastic things get lost. So I always need. And sometimes the bread wrapper doesn't come with the twisty one. It comes with the other one. It doesn't work as well. So, right. So as you can see, we're going to have a lot of distinctions between what is trash and what is treasure. And of course, that old adage, you know, what's one man's trash is another man's treasure. So when we're entering into the decluttering process, we need to think about, you know, some of the obstacles is one of the things we want to think about first so that we kind of position ourselves to do our best job decluttering. And so as we're thinking about it, and we want to be respectful and honor people's opinions and you know, kind of come to the middle about some of the things we're going to declutter in our home because a lot of the things don't belong to us. They might belong to our kids or our spouse, things like that. Some of the things have come from people we love that have passed away. And so it's very hard for us to declutter those things as well. So just be keeping mindful of what are the options for you and how are you respecting the things that are treasures to you. So I made a, a short list of the obstacles to decluttering and I thought we'd talk about them for a few minutes. And of course the first one is I might need it one day and especially in the environment we're in right now economically. We're all really thinking about I might need it one day. And it is a really big obstacle because we have this very long term view. But as we're going through our things, we also need to think about how we're going to bless others with our abundance. So even though we might need it one day, we need to put a shorter time frame. Because a lot of times our stuff is holding us back more than we think. And in us having to take care of this stuff, it might needing it one day, then it's just more and more building up 
and we're getting really overwhelmed and it never leaves as a result. So be thinking about when you're saying, I might need it one day, be very realistic and authentic with yourself about when you might need it. And I like to have people, I don't tell you that, you know, if you haven't used it in a year, you need to give it away, but you need to have to be thinking about when is the time that I would use it and just be really tuned in to some time frames for yourself. Financial attachments. And this used to be, I think, the hardest thing for people, but anymore I think it's getting easier because we have so much consignment and so many ways for us to regain the financial cost we put into something. I think all of us have clothes hanging in our closet with the tags on it, right? And as a result, we feel reluctant because we haven't used it well enough yet. So it's still a financial obligation to us. But we need to think about that decision is not going to be made any better by the length we keep it with that tag on it. So there's a lot of consignment in our community. Don't be afraid of going on Kingwood yard sales, uh, Craigslist, all of these ways that you can easily find a financial gain. The other thing is to take your financial gain in reverse by itemizing your list of things that you're donating. And the IRS states that it needs to be in good condition. So have that be the most prominent thing in your mind as you're donating. So you're donating things that can really be reused. And there's a resource that's online. It's called itsdeductibleonline.com. And it used to be that you had pay for it, but now it's free. And so as you're making this list, you can easily go to this resource and again, um, multiply how many things you're donating of each item. Keep that list with the um, receipt itself. And also take a picture of the items you're donating. And then put that with your tax papers so you're ready to get some financial gain in reverse. Sentimental attachment. Now this is another one that's really hard, and I'm, I think that um, the hardest thing for us is that it's been a gift given to us, and we have to take care of it in some manner. And so this obligation becomes a burden in many situations. And some of these obligations are still strongly emotional attachments for us, because if it's a tea set that you saw your mother or your grandmother use, that memory is scary to you that you might forget how it was used, so you're keeping the tea set to replace the memory. So as you're assessing what that sentimental attachment is, kind of reflect back to yourself. What is the core of that? Is the core of that, I want to remember my grandmother and honor her, or is the core of that, I love my grandmother, but it's time for me to release this and get it to someone else who really loves this teapot. And so just kind of assess what is that standing in your way? And you know, most frequently what we're hearing now is take a picture of it and then send it out into the universe. Some of the things that have some sentimental attachment because they're older we think have a different value than they might have. So there's lots of resources online. One of my favorite stories I tell is I had a paperweight collection that belonged to my mom. I didn't have a meaningful value for it for me, but I knew other people would love it. 280 paperweights. So I found a paperweight association, and that led me to a paperweight dealer who drove from Arkansas and purchased the paperweights. So again, just chipping away single item at a time to some of these sentimental attachments gets them to where people can really love them, and it's not an obligation for you any longer. Now, um, no time in procrastination. I think that is one of the biggest challenges I'm finding right now because, of course, we all lead very busy lives. There's a lot of other things that take first um, priority before decluttering. But what happens is we're having this snowball effect where we're so busy, our homes are becoming just a stop-off point. And often I see one of the biggest challenges is I brought it in, it doesn't even get to its right home in the house, so it's just clutter building on clutter. So we have to have what I call a little white space in your calendar. A little break where you're between these two stops that go on during your day, or a little time at the end of the day where you can regroup and get things to where they need to go. 